Okie dokie. Okay, welcome. My name's Jeff Avery and I'm here to talk about Dancer. Well, not exactly Dancer. I'm only going to get you to Hello World. A few years ago I started trying to use Dancer and it made a lot of assumptions that weren't quite true for me. So we're just going to get to the point where you can actually use Dancer and make something happen. So, let me. so what is Dancer? It's yet another one of those web frameworks. This one's based on Ruby Sinatra and unlike Catalyst, it doesn't require half a CPAN. <laughs> it claims to be dead simple, which may or may not be true. You can be the judge of that later. It uses plaque under the hood, so you write your dancer, then it uses the plaque, and then it goes off to the real world on the system, and it just sits in between. If you went to the dancer website, and you got their quick start, they would tell you do these four steps. Use curl, go out and collect dancer. Use the dancer command line script to make an application. Change directories into that directory. And then write plaque up and run your application, the PL file that comes with it. At this point, you can point your browser to port 3000 on your machine, and it's there. The hello world script is there. That's not really what I wanted to do. I didn't have a modern Perl yet, so I needed to go get that. I don't want my users to actually have to remember a port number. I didn't know how to make all the connections, and I didn't know how to make Nginx make the connections for me. So we had to go learn these things. Along the way, we're going to install a few things. I'm going to assume that you have a base Ubuntu right out of the box. I did it on Linode. And yes, when I made this version of the slides, I did eat my own dog food. I used the slides from the year before. I followed the steps one by one, fixed the corrections. And this is what I had to do to get to the point I wanted to be at. This is not the only way to get there. It is just one way that is guaranteed to actually get you there. It may be the case that you know five of the six steps far better than I do. But if you don't know one of them, you're not going to get there. Hopefully, the one step you're all missing is not the same step all the way around the room. Uh, so we're going to install GCC, Perl, Nginx, and Starman. We're going to go get all the things Dancer needs. We're going to configure Nginx to be out front. We'll configure Starman to sit in the back. We'll get the Hello World site up, and we will see it. And at a couple points along the way, I'll say, if you want to do Mojalicious instead, this is where things are different. For the most part, at this level, the same thing will get you there. Along the way, I'm going to show actual code. I did this in Pittsburgh, and one of the comments I got was, it'd be better with a live demo. One of the steps says, this is going to take a while. It takes 25 minutes. Live demos right out. Consider this more of a rig demo. I actually typed the things on the command line that you're going to see. And in some cases, I show you the thing, it spit back to me. We're just going to skip time. The anytime there is code on the screen, it'll be in four different colors, depending on which user is doing it. And we're going to create these users along the way, because remember, we have a brand new machine that's never been used before. So there's root, there's me, who is our developer. There's Mr. Prod, who is the one who's going to take care of the production version and the, demo, the devel versions and the other things. There can be other me's out there if you're in a bigger organization. On this particular server, I'm the only one, so I'm just me. And there's Mr. Pearl, who's going to take care of running Pearl Brew to install a new Pearl for us. Since we have a brand new machine, we need to make sure it's up to date. In the Ubuntu world, it's apt-get. In uh, the Red Hat world, it's yum, and there are a few other package managers out there. We will update and upgrade to make sure our machine is actually where it should be now, not where it was when they packaged the distribution a few months ago. We're going to install GCC. We do this because some modules that you're going to install off CPAN have some C components out there. And when they go and run those things, they sometimes get cranky that the compiler that you have is not the compiler they think you have. So to remove all doubt, we're going to install our own thing from the beginning. We're going to install our own Perl and just not worry about it. 
If we apt get install build essential, it will go and grab all these things you see in yellow and it will suggest some more. I didn't do any of the suggestions. I took the ones that I really needed. Now we're going to have GCC so we can compile things. Next, we need Nginx. Nginx is like Apache or IIS or a few of the other web servers. It's the one that's going to sit out front and when your users come in without a port number, it's going to take the hit and then say, oh, I know who can actually answer this for me and then pass things through to Dancer. We're going to have some groups. This is a Unix machine. I suppose someday I should make the slides in a Windows version too, but haven't gotten there. So we're going to have two groups. People, that's for me and Mr. Prod. And we're going to have almost root, which is for Mr. Pearl, because he's going to install the Pearl and take care of it. If you're in a bigger organization, you can add some of your other developers to the almost root, but that's between you and your system administrators. We're going to create some users. Oh, I've been over most of us already. At the time I made these slides, I was using TCH because long ago Bash wasn't an option and that's what I got used to. At the new job, I switched back to Bash, but that's why it says TCH. We're going to put them in the right groups so that they'll be able to play along later. And this in yellow is what you see instances of websites. When I created all these, I had 14 domains and I had a me version and a dev version and a prod version. So there's a great many websites all on one machine, which is why I've done some of the things I've done that don't make as much sense if you just have one domain, but it'll all work. Notice here that I'm chamoding it making it all wide open, 777. I put this on the slide and someone said, that's not secure. So I changed the slide and said, make the directory and change it so the owner is the correct one that's going to be writing into it. And someone else said, well, if you're in a bigger organization with lots of machines, now the usernames get out of sync and that's a mess too. So whichever works for you, I think you should actually make it 777, get it started, and then when you see who's actually writing in there, then lock it down. But not that big a deal at the beginning. Nginx is going to want some logs too, so we put them in var log, same routine. PID, the process ID. I had not realized before I started this process that processes like to write their ID somewhere so that they will know how to kill themselves later. Well, you need to know who to, who to kill, so you look in this directory, you find the file they wrote, and in the file, there's just a number. It's a process ID, and that's what you're going to kill. And we'll have an example of that later. One important thing to note, the way I had done it is I made a directory in here so I could keep them all clustered together away from the big bunch one layer higher. Every time you restart your machine, this directory gets hosed. It's gone. So you need to find some way to turn it back on. I will add something to the slides to tell how to make that happen automatically. I forgot to get around to it this time. So root's going to have an alias. We're going to restart Nginx. For those of you who play in T shell and C shell, I've done it both ways because most instructions only think you work in the bash shell side of the world. Oops. I think we went too far. Next, we're going to need Perl. We're not going to use the system Perl because you don't want to mess with that. There's a great many things on your machine already that want it. We're going to install a new one somewhere else. And because Perl Brew likes to use local lib and it's not in the default, we're going to grab both of them right now. And just say yes, it's okay, it's not going to be a problem. Then we were going to make a place for our Perl Brew. In the normal course of using Perl Brew as a normal mortal, you run it and you install Perl Brew in your home directory in a Perl Brew directory right there. Everybody has their own copy. Because Mr. Pearl is going to do this for us, we're going to put it in one place where we can all use and all our scripts and all our websites will play together. So I made a new place, opt Pearl Brew, and we make it Mr. Pearl's and almost root. And we're going to set an alias, uh, not a, an environment variable, so that we know where that is. Now it's time to install it. We're going to do this as Mr. Pearl because he's the one who's going to own it all. And then once it's there, you can go down into that directory and you run it and you use the command available to tell you which pearls are available now. This is yesterday's version. 
which goes up through 520, which came out recently. However, I did this a little bit before that happened, so all the examples are going to show 518.0 from last year. At this point, we want to uh, install it, and it says it could take a while. This is the part that takes 25 minutes, but we'll skip ahead. Now, because we are putting it in a place and we can install as many of them as we want there, we're going to create a sim length called current, which will point to the one we want, and then in your dancer scripts, we'll just use that one instead of the system Perl. Time to install some modules. We're still Mr. Perl. So we go to the place where we want, and we are going to use CPAN M. Apparently CPAN P is the new hotness, but M was there and works. I'm going to install DBI. You may not actually need database access in what you're going to do, but DBI is one of those modules that has a C component, which is going to prove that our GCC we put in earlier is working. So I always put that in first just to be safe. And DB, if, since we're doing that, we'll put in the, the slimmest of the DBs, SQLite. We're going to get YAML because it's used for configuration inside Dancer. And now we're going to go grab some of the things that we're actually going to need to make Dancer work. Plaque, task plaque, and star man. And then we're going to get the Dancer parts here on the end of the line. If you were going the Mojalicious route, you need the ones up through star man and Mojalicious. I didn't actually install Mojalicious without the Dancer parts, but doing all the things on this page in the order and doing Mojalicious last will make Mojalicious work. We're going to add our current newest Perl to the path, and we're going to do it out in front, so normally when you just say Perl on the command line, this will be the one you get, not the system one. But anything that came with the system should have a shebang line that gets the old one. Next, we need a sandbox, so we're going to make a place to play. I called it websites, and we're going to go there. And at this point, we're now up to step two of the four steps they gave us on the quick start. And we're only 12 minutes in. <coughs> we'll create our Hello World site. You just give it the name of a module, which is the main module for your place. It will make a directory of a similar name. And these are the files it will create. Let me make it a little smaller right now. There are, when you run it, the list will be slightly longer because it includes the directories. I only included the files because I figured we're all fairly smart in that arrangement. Now, to run it from the back end without using Nginx, you can just say plaque up. In my case, I'm going to give it a port. And then you tell it which PL file, which is the one that was in there, you want to run. And if we come down here and open this in a new window, it should open up. And that is your Hello World script that comes straight out of the box from Dancer. And it's running, but you'll notice it's running on a port. So now we're going to configure it so it'll work in other ways. I'm showing you these assumptions so mostly because if you see any of these values on later slides, those are the things you need to replace with things that make sense on your machine. Because I said earlier that I had many domains and I had several variations of them, my port naming scheme is all of my stuff goes in the 18,000s and the devs go in the 19,000s, and the productions are in the 20,000s, and then each site gets a small number, so this site is 21, so we're, it's why it's 18,021, and production would be 20,021. And I found that this keeps me out of trouble. But whatever you need to do. Next, Nginx, like Apache, needs to sit out front and be listening for things, and you configure it to know wh what port is it listening on, what domain is it listening for, and what's it need to do if it gets a call. Dancer has a <coughs> public directory, which you'll see in here. We put our images and our JavaScripts and other things that don't change go in public, and you let Nginx take care of it, and you never bother Dancer. For everything else, 
it comes down to the bottom one here where it says, oh, that's a dancer thing. I don't know what to do, but my good buddy dancer knows. And it's going to call over to port 18,021 and let the other guy take care of it and just send it back through. Really? Thanks. So after you've done your changes to tell Nginx what to do, you need to activate them. And Nginx, like Apache, has two directories. One of them is enabled and the other is available. You do all your editing and available and the ones that you actually want active, you go in and have them flip up to available with a sim link. And then if you need to take the site out, you don't have to worry about losing your configuration. You just disable it by breaking the link. Now we want to start the backend server so when Nginx says, hey, take care of this for me, it can. We saw earlier you can use plaque up from the command line and it will just run. But when you do that, all your log files come right here to the console. And if you're just doing development, that's fine. Actually, that's what I do at work for my copy. I just don't bother with the logs. But if you're doing particularly the production version, you probably want to do it right and demonize it. So we use Starman and we demonize it. You pick a port, you tell it where to put its logs, you tell it where to write its process ID so we'll be able to cancel it, and you tell it how many workers to use. And then, of course, the PL script on the end. By default, it has five workers. If you're just doing your copy where you're actually editing, you don't probably need all five. So originally I set this to one and then somebody pointed out that since there are more than one worker usually and things jump around between them, if you don't set it for at least two, it might not catch some errors because it always is hitting the same one. So set it for at least two, that way it will occasionally jump between them and if something goes wrong, it will catch it. So at this point, we can also click on it by the other name. And we get the same site, but notice this time it has a real domain at the top and no port number. About the only thing that the Hello World script actually does is show you a few parameters. But there are lots of tutorials out there to tell you where to go from here. So after you've got it going, sometimes you want to kill it. You can do it with kill and then the PID ID out of that file. At work, we actually have set a make file to take care of this and a whole lot more things. I just haven't stolen it yet to put in here. Now, we're just the right amount of time and I have three more slides in the bonus topic. So we're going to go on. There are some other slides on my site to talk about Git and Gitosis so that you have a repository if you want to go look at that. That's why there were so many different colors and Mr. Prod was involved and didn't actually seem to do much in this 20 minute version. He's in the long version. So the bonus topic. This is the configure file that comes with it. Notice that it talks about template toolkit down here and it has the square braces. That's because template toolkit Sometimes it's done with the angles and sometimes it's done with the squares and when Dancer came along they decided to do it the other way. But some people already had stuff from the old way and you want to turn it off so you would just uncomment these lines and deal with it. And I decided to make a change and I took this file and turned it into this file. And something went wrong. That something is this. This chunk of stuff, if you make this mistake, will end up in your log file. It will keep writing this to your log file over and over until one of two things happens. Either you notice and deal with it, or two, you fill your complete disk. I've done this more than once. And I did it again recently. Although the error message was different, but I was able to realize what I had done wrong. So does anybody know what we did wrong on those, that previous slide? If I go back and make it bigger again so you can see, this is after 
And this is before. The space at the beginning of the line, but for template. I took the, the pound out. I should have taken the pound out and moved it over. YAML cares about white space, kind of like Python. If you don't remember to move it over, it thinks template is under char set and not out at the front. It will generate lots of log messages and bring your machine to a crash. Don't make this mistake. You've been seen it once now, you at least know what to look for. And that's it, we're at the end. My slides are available from the website and I'll take a question or two, but before we do that, bye YouTube. Okay. Does the, that chunk of error, does that actually even remotely tell you what it is? Not exactly. <laughs> and the other way, the, what caused that to happen is two of the 14 domains, I had made a mistake in their configuration so they couldn't start up. So when they tried to fire up, they couldn't, and it generated that much error saying I couldn't start, but in their infinite wisdom they tried again. And a month ago, after 779 days of uptime, Linode restarted me because they moved me to a better machine, and when I started it back up, I forgot that I said early that var run plaque up gets blown away every time you restart. I forgot that. I ran my thing to fire it up and the websites didn't come up and didn't really tell me. And on top of it, one of the sites was still configured badly and filled the log file. So, it's just something to think about. Because the error will not tell you. So, that's it. Go out and dance. <laughs>